Two months ago, this 15-year-old boy was viciously murdered. His killing has turned Thamesmead, once London's model new town, into a town of terror. Many residents have imposed a voluntary curfew. Others are packing up and leaving. My child could be next. Unless something is done, or the kids is going to get hurt. At a South London cemetery, family and friends say their last farewells to Roland Adams. The 21st of March would have been Roland Adams' 16th birthday. Instead, it was the day he was buried. Roland died in Thamesmead last February, less than a mile from his home in Abbey Wood. He was stabbed to death, allegedly after being chased by a gang of youths. Thamesmead is a sprawling, privately run new town in the far corner of south-east London. It's home to 26,000 people. One in five of them is black. Nobody knows why Roland Adams was murdered or in what circumstances. But his death is the most serious in a growing number of violent incidents in the town. This young man had ammonia sprayed in his face and his two black friends were beaten up in the local shops. This guy came up to me and started calling me names. You nigger, I'm going to slash your throat, I'm going to kick you, I'm going to beat you. Then I told him that I haven't got a problem. He continued saying this thing, saying, you nigger, I'm going to beat you, I'm going to kill you today. In 1990, the number of racial assaults reported to the police on Thamesmead doubled. The latest annual report for the Hawksmoor Youth Club records a horrifying catalogue of assaults on young blacks. A 16-year-old boy's head was chopped open. Another was stabbed in the arm and put in hospital for eight days. And yet another had constantly been threatened at school by white boys. He'd also been chased and threatened with a chain by the same people. Like you're really scared. You are scared inside. When you stop running, like your heart would be pounding. But, I mean, it would seem like it would be pounding for ages. And you'd still be shaking, but it's just the adrenaline pumping through you and you're just shaking, do you know what I mean? That's what it's like. 15-year-old Marlon Conton has been attacked on several occasions by gangs of white youths, many carrying weapons. Seem pickaxe handles, like little uh, rounders bats about this size, um, flip knives, knives, I've seen, when I say big knives, you, you know like the Rambo knives, survival knives, I've seen big ones like that, I've seen machetes, I've seen the works, I've got everything, I mean if it wasn't a racist attack, um, that, and they, they came up to attack me. They, they, there'd be no need to say, oh, Marlon, you black this, Marlon, you black that, Marlon, you nigger. There'd be no need to say that. The Contons, like at least 20 other families, have fled their home in Thamesmead. They are now in hiding. Marlon's mother, Aloma, says this drastic step was the only way she could guarantee his safety. If he's around Thamesmead, they will attack him if they see him. He avoids them on every occasion, 
but obviously he can't walk about <laughs> shrouded. I mean, his colour gives him away straight away. I don't feel that I should let my son live in Thamesmead and have to die there because of the races. I would prefer to move away. The increasing ferocity and frequency of the attacks has created a fear amongst residents, black and white, that anyone could be caught up in the violence. Many feel secure only in the daytime. I mean, a lot of people don't go out at night. We don't let our children out on the streets because they, we're frightened. There's so much violence going on around here. People are not going out in the night. They just stay at home. They, they prefer staying at home because they don't want to get killed, you know what I mean? They don't want to get killed. When it was first conceived 27 years ago, Thamesmead was hailed as a model of a new kind of urban community, modern, green, open and tolerant. Today it's almost impossible to recognise the planner's vision in the grim reality of everyday life here. Many of the people who live in Thamesmead are afraid to venture out at night. Some we've talked to are in hiding. So tonight we ask what's gone wrong in Thamesmead and whether more lives have to be ruined before the violence is stopped. In 1972, director Stanley Kubrick chose Thamesmead as the setting for his film A Clockwork Orange, a futuristic vision of alienated youth in Britain. He used the walkways and tower blocks as locations for scenes of brutal gang violence. But when Thamesmead's architects and planners drew up their designs, no one imagined it could turn out like this. When a thousand acres of this area were released from their historic use, the Greater London Council took up the challenge and the chance to plan a new community for 60,000 Londoners. Thamesmead was conceived as a new, self-contained riverside town in south-east London, to be built on land formerly used for testing and storing weapons, straddling the boroughs of Greenwich and Bexley. This is how the councillors, planners, architects, civil engineers had begun to see Thamesmead, a town of the 21st century. This model shows the town centre. Education, recreation, sports and children's play. All vital needs of a growing, healthy, modern community are being built into the plan. The aim was to create a balanced community with a full range of facilities and services for all the residents. By the early 70s, the first residents were moving in. But soon things started to go wrong. The showpiece town centre never happened. Plans for the Jubilee Line and other vital transport links to London, like the East London River Crossing, failed to materialise, leaving Thamesmead a virtual island. The grandiose scheme conceived in the heady 60s couldn't be sustained in the cost-conscious and sober 70s. We wouldn't build anything like this anymore. It was a product of that whole post-war period of public-led development and then effectively it got beached uh, by another era which uh, didn't have the resources to, or the commitment to, to, to do these kind of, or see these kind of projects through. Worse still, Thamesmead became a dumping ground for poor or difficult families. Today, two out of three are on housing benefit. Half the adults are unemployed. The GLC was bound to take people who were referred to it from the boroughs, that was the part of the, the job of the GLC. I suppose you could say that um, they should have thought a bit more carefully about allocation policy. Part of the problem with Thamesmead was and is its isolation and the fact that it wasn't ever developed as a properly mixed community with the facilities that communities, whether it's Thamesmead or elsewhere, need. People who came here in the early days say there was originally a strong sense of community. But Mark Anderson, former editor of the first Thamesmead community paper, has observed the area's decline at first hand. Thamesmead did become a dumping ground. That's half its problem. They basically just threw the doors open for the first five or six years um, just to get anyone onto Thamesmead. But as the years went on, people saw Thamesmead more as a prison 
and began to resent the areas and lost interest in all facilities and stopped trying. The failure to provide the kind of facilities originally intended for Thamesmead has left many of those who moved here hoping for a new life both deeply disappointed and desperate to get out. But recently, a new consequence of that failure has emerged. Some of the young people who have grown up here, in contrast to their parents, have developed a fierce loyalty to the place that has become both perverse and frightening. For those who thought the gang violence of a clockwork orange was pure fiction, there was an alarming development in the early 80s. The film's nightmare prediction has come to haunt Thamesmead for real. The town has spawned gangs of its own. Cut off and deprived, what has made these real-life gangs unique is an exaggerated sense of loyalty to the place where they live. The Moorings Shopping Precinct in central Thamesmead. This is the place where the gangs have always met. The latest gang calls itself the NTO. Like their predecessors, they too have a fierce sense of loyalty to Thamesmead. Three of the gang members agree to speak to the London programme's John Taylor. For legal reasons, we've concealed their identities. We live here. We live here. We got to live here, haven't we? So we've got to look, keep it nice, haven't we? Can't have untold trouble going on on the manor. And, uh, and what, us, what us is, if we're here on the manor, then no one's going to come down and make trouble on the manor. Well, what do you mean by keeping it nice? Keeping it quiet. Keeping it to just people we know. No outsiders. Strangers ain't like Danny, you know what I mean? They ain't. It's a known fact. It's just like really. us walking onto another man. Another, another group's coming down, they're coming down for trouble because nothing comes up, it tends to be. So, like, there's only one thing they can come down for trouble. And that's us. The constant presence of the gang in and around the local shops intimidates many of the residents. I don't go around there. It's, it's, it's not safe to go around there. The, the kids hang around outside the pub and they aggravate other people that go around there. They deliberately cause upset around there. But most worrying of all, some of the gang members have begun to see the defence of their territory in racist terms. Black teenagers like Duane Nico grew up on Thamesmead with many of the white gang. But last year, after he began making new friends off Thamesmead, a series of terrifying incidents made it clear that he was no longer welcome. One involved him being pursued for nearly an hour by a white youth on a motorbike. I thought for the first, first couple, about 20 minutes when he was chasing me, he, did, he looked like he had some weapon on him, but he was chasing me with, I was just scared that he had something, because first of all, he looked like he had a knife, a rusty knife, then a spanner. And then he had something in his scarf that he was waving around trying to chase me with. So I knew he'd probably do something, plus it was just me and him on my own. And no one seemed to be taking any notice of me. They saw me running, they wasn't doing nothing. Duane's mother has taken him into hiding. She fears for his life. I'm worrying all the time. I'm worrying each time I pick up the phone, wondering whether it's going to be my son at the, on the end of the line saying, my mum, I'm all right, or whether it's going to be the police or... or, or, or Oh, doctor saying, Mrs. Nico, your son, something has happened to your son. I leave here at 7.30 in the mornings and I get home just after 7 in the evenings. And I don't stop worrying until I get home and know that he's safe. They was more jealous of me, me being their friends and then me going somewhere else, meeting new friends. And they was thinking me jealous and thinking that um, I might be a threat to them if I make new friends and I might come back and bring all my friends home and they might, be, they might just think I'm going to be a threat to Thamesmead. Are you fearful of that, people? No, no way. The and they ain't coming to take over Thamesmead. Yeah. They, might, they might do that, but they, they, they won't do it here. They won't do it here. Because yeah. I've been here 17 years and like, there's no way they can just come down and like, move us off. Yeah, move us off. And then you you got just the gang members we talked to right claim right they are not responsible for the attacks on Duane Nico and Marlon Conton. But the black youngsters are in no doubt that the situation is now seriously out of control. Before, I mean, I used to think to myself, all right, they could, they could, they could give me a bit of a bashing. 
but they can't kill me. That's how I used to think. Do you know what I mean? Now it's different, it's different now. There are, of course, racist gangs in other parts of London, but Thamesmead seems to have spawned a uniquely nasty variety. Yet none of this has come out of the blue. So the question is, why has the problem been allowed to grow apparently unchecked? The local police might have been expected to be the first body to realise what was going on. Thamesmead's police station is just 100 yards from the shopping precinct where the gangs congregate. But senior police officers say they had little indication of the extent of racial tension brewing on their doorstep, since many of the incidents were not reported to them. Black residents, however, believe their concern about the escalating violence was just not taken seriously. The impression I got speaking to some of the officers, it was that there were no problem. There was no problem on Thames Mead. And we were just like, we were just paranoid blacks who were sort of calling wolf, wolf, and there were no um, wolf there. Eventually, the police did become sufficiently worried to appoint a specialist officer to look into the growing tensions. I was concerned and I felt that the level of antisocial and violent behaviour among young people particularly was something that we should not tolerate. And my first measure to tackle that was to appoint a racial incident officer because I felt the most important of those occurrences were, the, were those that were racially motivated and those that were the ones giving the most unease um, to people living in the area. Many black people welcomed this development, but there was still grave concern. The warning voices were becoming more insistent in December, the youth worker who had earlier reported the escalating catalogue of violent incidents circulated a letter to the police, Greenwich Council, Thamesmead Town and local MPs. She reported that youth workers were fearful about the increasing number of racist gang attacks and warned, if this problem is not looked into, the repercussions for the community will be serious. Elsewhere in London, the events that have taken place in Thamesmead would have provoked both alarm and urgent action by the local authority. High profile investigations, warnings, even attempts at eviction would have followed the youth workers report. Here there's been little of that sort of action. Part of the reason at least must lie in the way that Thamesmead has been governed since the abolition of the GLC. In 1986 the government sold Thamesmead to a private company, Thamesmead Town Limited, thus removing it from local authority control. The move was hailed as a radical experiment, a privately run town with a board of directors elected directly by and from local residents. Thamesmead Town Limited inherited policies on racial harassment developed by the GLC. Complaints have been running at 25 a year. I asked the company's chief executive how they're dealt with. Our procedures would include visiting the, uh, the uh, individual who has uh, uh, undertaken the harassment. Our procedures would include writing to that individual and, and we've never successfully undertaken this, but uh, should we have evidence that would enable us to take effective proceedings for, for possession, we would undertake those proceedings. I will not take uh, possession proceedings until my solicitors advise that there is a solid case which will give us a good chance of achieving a successful action. Have you um, issued warnings? Yes, we have. How many? I don't know. When it took over, the new management seemed determined to confront some of the more fundamental problems inherited from the GLC. In 1988, it commissioned a firm of community architects to look into what had gone wrong in the troubled moorings area. Thamesmead Town promised that the investigation would pull no punches and result in improvements to the quality of life for residents there. And Thamesmead, we found when we came and interviewed people, people have a very low self-image and lack of identity, which really springs from the fact that um, everybody was brought into a new uh, architectural solution which failed to fit the people. It didn't respond to their needs. And in fact, only half the people, when asked, say that they really chose to come here. The details of the report were confidential, but we've obtained a copy. On the subject of gangs, it said, Half the residents in the area thought gangs of youths were a major problem and their antisocial behaviour had contributed to the area's decline. The Hunt-Thompson report recommended wide-ranging changes at a cost of some £10 million. 
The thrust is to try and get the physical environment and the social environment both working better and both working in harmony. Physically, there are many improvements that can be made. Sadly, it costs a lot of money. In social terms, uh, because of the very high proportion of young kids and the formation of the youth groups, youth gangs, uh, quite clearly there was an urgent need to provide uh, more provision that actually matched their needs. Although Thamesmead Town has carried out some of the recommendations of the Hunt-Thompson report, most residents still believe little has been done to tackle the problem of young people with nothing to do. Well, they're just gangs everywhere, gangs groups. Everywhere you go, don't matter. And, but, like, gangs of teenagers and only hanging around and, like, causing the trouble because there's nothing else for them, nothing at all. Well, there's no amenities. Thamesmead Town haven't provided anything for the kids. It's all right if you're a duck because there's plenty of water and it's all right if you're a cow because there's plenty of grass, grass. but other than that, there's nothing else. Look, bricks and concrete. I've frequently come across these suggestions. It was also one of the elements of feedback that we got from the Hunt-Thompson report, which we discussed earlier. The fact is that there are a large number of facilities here in Thamesmead which, for whatever reason, whatever agency they're run by, do not, in fact, manage to convey to our community their existence or presence. In the long term, the company hopes that its £100 million plans to complete the town centre will also address its youth problem by providing a whole range of new facilities for young people. So far, it's been refused planning permission and is the subject of a public inquiry beginning next week. It could be years before the plans come to fruition. Whatever the Thamesmead Town Company intends to do, there seems little prospect of arresting the spiral in violence. And we've discovered that events are taking a sinister new turn. What was previously random abuse looks as though it is now being deliberately and systematically organised. At the Adams home in Abbey Wood, Roland's parents Richard and Audrey have not been allowed to grieve in peace. Since the loss of their son two months ago, they've been subjected to constant harassment and abuse. Sleepless nights. They found regular and sometimes 30 phone calls a day. We've had 10 in five minutes. They, you know, cars pulling into the square that we live in, banging, shouting abuses at friends and relatives. And what's made matters worse the overtly racist British National Party has been campaigning in the street where they live. They delivered leaflets after Roland was killed, um, promoting their party, and we were the only household that didn't get one. And there's, as I said, there's two black families. Obviously, they didn't know there were black families that live on this road, and they got leaflets, so they know where we are. The British National Party operates from a building four miles away in Welling. A spokesman denied they had targeted the Adams family in any way. But he did admit that Thamesmead was what he called a fertile breeding ground for the party. How many members do you have on the Thamesmead estate? Well, in fact, um, we never asked uh, the uh, question how many members we've got. That's um, a rather private matter to ourselves. But you do have members on the estate? We have members from one end of the United Kingdom to the other, certainly in the London... Specifically, your membership, there is membership of the BNP living on Thamesmead? We have members living in the London Borough of Greenwich, and that includes the Thamesmead. Are they young people, old people? We have young people who've joined us all over, and that certainly includes Thamesmead, yes. The already volatile racial situation on Thamesmead looks set to grow more tense. Last week, Plumstead Police Station was picketed by activists wanting a tougher line on racial attacks. Tomorrow, there's a march to the BNP offices in Welling. At its head will be the controversial anti-racist crusader, the Reverend Al Sharpton, arriving in London this weekend. In America, his name has become a byword for militant anti-racist action. Meanwhile, as the temperature rises on the streets of Thamesmead, black residents increasingly feel trapped. Homeowners are finding it difficult to sell, tenants hard to get a transfer out of the area. Those that have escaped fear the worst is yet to come. I'm worried for them. I'm worried for them because 
without sort of wanting to give those idiots sometimes made satisfaction of saying they've driven us out because they're so stupid because they're so illiterate they might feel yes we've driven in that one out we've driven in that one out let's go and drive the rest of them out <laughs>